Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time it's going to be Drone versus Aquanim on Quicksilver. Silver is one word. Okay. This map is a map which I have shown before, but it's worth showing again. Everything's 1.5, just to point out. And it's also a little bit choppy. I apologize, that's actually the game itself. It, this is a very resource intensive map. I'm not quite sure why. I think it's all the trees. The tree models. It's pretty, but it's... Yeah, it does tax the frame rate a bit. So if you think the frame rate is dropping, that is because it is. I apologize. Anyway. This map is also one with some choke points. It's kind of StarCraft-y, but I don't think it is, in fact, a StarCraft clone. There are some maps that have been made that are actually StarCraft hype maps. Like Ravage, for example. This one I don't think is, but it has a similar style. It has you know, your standard opening base with the choke point ramps and with this ramp here as well as the water. It also does have I mean, these choke points here which are kind of open, which may, leads me to believe this isn't actually a StarCraft map, just how open and flat this is, because this is, this is flat. I mean, it's about as flat as flat can be, other than the ramps. Typically this map you often see a lot of territory control. Territory control is a big deal in this map. If you take this choke point, you pretty much have this area here or this area over the north. Having the main base, you still need to move forward and take things beyond, but if you have this metal extractor and areas around it, basically have this safe, except through this ramp. So territory control comes up a lot here, and I often talk about it on this map. Generally, you see a wide variety of factories, actually, and we are seeing Drone going for early spiders, while Aquanum, on the other hand, is going for Cloakybot Factory. Fairly typical early start, rather safe one. Oftentimes, you do see Cloakybot Factory. And Drone... Drone is coming in here and will be able to scout up. Well, getting a lot of fleas. How many fleas are there? It's like, oh, it's just infinite number of fleas. Okay. They're just spamming fleas. Looks like they want to go up this cliff face and attack with a giant amount of fleas. That's exactly what they're attacking with. That's, that is their strategy. Swarm with fleas, or at least early on. Just around everywhere. I mean, fleas are, fleas are good for scouting. They aren't really that powerful. But, at least the scouting has been set. Drone has... Oh, never mind. They are going for the attack. They aren't going to be able to deal too much damage, though. They, they're they going to try, but Glaives act like riots against Fleas. The Fleas are weak. Fleas hardly deal any damage. They get killed very easily, but... And apparently Drone had a lot of lag at, the, at that point in the game. Rather unfortunate, because that fleet could have taken on the metal extractor form for the lag. Regardless, Drone is going from there to... Well, Weaver. I think they might have expected to have fleas for longer to distract Aquanim further. Aquanim, however, not distracted, does have a couple glaives forward and not a whole lot to stop them. The Defender won't be able to stop both of the glaives. It'll put the one on a half health. The Drone's commander, though, that should finish them off. And Weaver's coming in. This Weaver's actually going to die without any cost. Akinem got a free Weaver out of that. Gonna lose the Glaive, though. The other one's gonna take damage, but no further defenses. Akinem able to deal quite a lot of damage here. This Glaive getting free hits, and the Defender just now reloads. But at this point, this Glaive, Akinem's Glaive, way too far from the Defender to be dealt damage. However, it is knocking down trees, making its presence obvious. But even then, takes out another Metal Extractor for free. Akinem getting a nice early harassment in. Very, very nice harassment. Well, on the other hand, Aquanim, they are also getting, well, she's not getting a whole lot of economy production. That's the only thing. They're reclaiming nicely. They are making sure they don't have to build wind generators. They have a few, but they don't have many power generators. Drone, on the other hand, going for the wind gens, not going for reclaim, which is interesting. Not sure if they want to have it so they can watch glaives go around and see how they knock down trees, or if they're just not in the habit of reclaiming map features. I really don't know. But Aquanim is going for that, meaning they don't have as much cost, or early on they didn't have as much cost in power, for the power they had. And now continuing to build up, well, Drone also building out, getting that Weaver around the side. They lost one for free, but the other one was able to quickly go down the hill without any concerns of being harassed. And this Glaive here trying to move forward, but not able to do so. Trees blocking the path of the missile. But still, not a whole lot can be done here, and the Venom will finish it off. 
clear out the forest and, well, at least partially clear out the forest, knock down a few trees, take out the glaive, and that's the end of that harassment attempt. But still, Aquanim did a very good job harassing, but Drone bypassed that completely. Weaver just slipped right by, built a few metal extractors, and Drone does not, sorry, Aquanim has not matched that up. Aquanim, however, is ahead militarily, but at this point, they have to switch over to Rocco's. Rocco's or Warriors, they don't have anything else they can use. Venoms will tear apart everything else. They do have Rocco's set up, however. They have two Rocco's, one more in production. Rocco's typically do well against the whole Spider Factory. Or at least historically have, though Redbacks can be a bit of a problem. I found personally that Redbacks typically are better handled, I think, by Zeus. Just given the sheer amount of health that Zeus has, because Redbacks deal a huge amount of damage. Rocco's, on the other hand, they can fare well, but they're typically the best at dealing with Venoms. Everything else they can deal with okay, but Venoms are the main thing they deal with, which makes sense. Venoms are the riots. And skirmishes typically beat riots, so that fits. Anyway, Akronim is going to be going for Commander Forward. Support Comm as well, and Scythe, I completely missed this, but yes, there's a Scythe in here as well. Akronim not able to stop the construction of the Metal Extractor, but able to stop its existence. Just needs to get that scythe out of there very carefully. Unfortunately, there are enough. The fleas can pretty easily go through. They don't actually spot it. Drone doesn't end up spotting it, assuming assuming that the scythe has left. The fleas retreat, leaving the scythe open to actually continue to attack. And not going to be able to defend against a harassment attempt over at the south side of the base. And another harassment by the venom here. Unfortunately, moving too quickly for the Rocco, the single Rocco to deal with. And no further Rockos are... Well, actually, a couple more are coming up, but they're having a hard time dealing with this. Venoms... I think this Venoms can only deal with one set of Glaives at a time, or like one Glaive at a time, and then after that they go down. More than one Glaive, and they get hit by multiple groups. They don't have that much Splash. The Arab effect, it's fairly good, but it's not perfect. Which is fine, it's exactly what it should be. However, like I said, does mean you have multiple groups, it works. Scythe, however, has been spotted out, has been taken out by the Venom, and that's slowly but surely taken out by Venom and Fleas. The one downside to the Splash is that Fleas trying to help destroy something tend to get paralyzed in the process of the support. You have to be very careful about your spacing of your Fleas. The Splash of the, rock, the, splash of the Venom is just about the same. Let's check here. Air effect 80 Elmos. The range of this is 140. So the range is a little... The range of the flea is a little over double the splash radius of the Venom's attack. Thus, very difficult to stop it. And I think there was actually a buff too for the fleas recently. Not sure though, but anyway, yeah, fleas are hard to manage with Venoms. Worth pointing out. So Drone has kind of taken the east side of the map. Aquanim's more or less taking the west side of the map, but much less securely. And Drone also taking advantage of the reclaim there. Aquanim... They've already taken advantage of the reclaim that they could get, but Drone hasn't really attacked all that much. Oh no, never mind, they haven't taken this. This particular Venom, still open for reclaim, could use a Conjurer over here. Also, should point out, both players... No, never mind, just Aquanim. Drone actually does have a Crab coming in, does have a Caretaker. They are having no plus 20 hunt problems. On the other hand, Aquanim soon will. They're building enough that it's not going to matter yet. And they're also going for Hammers, curiously enough. There are some static defenses, but I don't think there's enough that Rockos and Glaze couldn't deal with quite yet. However, going for Hammers. Curious choice, because the Venoms will be able to take them out fairly easily. I mean, the added pressure of the Hammers, the zoning pressure that it can produce, might ha that might help, but I don't know if that was the best choice. I have been very curious to see high-level Hammer play, though. I, I do want to see if it can be used at the high level. If hammers actually have a use other than just the occasional defense break need. Which does come up, but honestly, there are probably better units. Like Crab is a great unit for this sort of thing. But hammers, not sure how useful they are overall. And a scythe coming in just to scout out. Quite a few scythes. How many scythes are around here anyway? Just the one. Just that one scythe. And Venom's going down, trying to take out this glaive. Drone is paying attention to this. Or is Drone paying attention? Well, paying some attention, getting that Venom out of there. But ultimately, they did lose one Venom, the second Venom able to get out of there, but at the same time, Hammer's coming in, and they are, well, they're forcing that crab forward. I mean, they're kind of forcing Drone's hand, especially since it is moving. 
can have more damage dealt to crabs only have their armor when they are not moving. However, they are not moving right next to this. This is what I mean. Crabs are actually really good at dealing with defenses. I mean, you would have to switch factories in order to do so, but... Yeah, I don't know how good hammers are for this. I mean, they can kind of see that the crab is stationary. Hammers can hit stationary targets fairly well. I just don't understand the cost. And not to mention, I think... Are the hammers dead? No, the, they can't be. Where are... Okay. Oh, yeah, they were damaged. But at the same time, Rock was coming around the back. No defenses were set up along the south side of the map. Nice harassment, and actually Drone's Commander is completely open. It does have Beam Laser, but that's it. Otherwise completely open. Unfortunately, the Lotus was not spotted before... Yeah, I guess it wasn't spotted beforehand. So Aquanim ran their forces right into that. But the Rockos do go down. Another Rocco does go down. Weaver... It's trying to kill the Weaver in the process, but this... That could have been a calm kill, and Drone actually... They only have plus 16 right now. Both due to the harassment and due to the fact that they were relying a lot on reclaim. So, oh, and this crab, so close to death. 454 left. Hammer's going to try its best, but it won't have a chance. The Rockos will have a decent chance, but the Hammer will not. And that Rocco does go down. Both Rockos going down. That's valiant effort, but unfortunately they kind of got distracted by that Lotus. They did not respond to it. Like, Akunim did not manage to pull them back in time. So they didn't get the nice spread line formation on it, and then from there, they didn't manage to kill it without losing some of their own. Bit unfortunate, but that's how it went. Akron continued to put on pressure with the hammers. Rock was for some sort of defense, and Glaives as well, but the Glaives are going to go down to the red back. I think Akron is aware... Yeah, Akron totally aware of that red back. Does not want to walk into that, because that will kill them. Redback being a dedicated riot unit. Akron, however, is taking the north side, so Akron getting a decent economy while they're building up. However, they are primarily building up Glaives, while Drone is primarily building up everything to counter Glaives. And we're trying to move back. They should be able to move back quickly enough. And the Redback, moving forward, not able to avoid the Rockos in time, takes a bit of damage. Doesn't go down, though. Far from going down. And the Crab getting repaired, which is exactly what needs to be done. So the Crab has no threat to his existence whatsoever. Aquanum... Unfortunately, not able to kill it, but able to force it to retreat, and thanks to that, taking advantage of that forced retreat to put on pressure, continuing to rush down Drone, just continuing to pressure them from all sides. Very strongly, Venom's trying to come around to break out of this, trying to deal with some of these that have been pushed around the sides. Zeus and Glaives to deal with that, but they are going to be stunlocked. And at the same time, we have the Hammers. Ah, Hammer and Rocco all getting killed. The Rocco's right before they killed off this and the hammers are about to get cornered. Remember for the kill off this metal extractor, that would have been a good kill, but the hammers can't really do that. They can actually move a bit forward. Drone does see the hammer on the radar, though. Knows exactly where it is. But Akronim, however, does have the economic advantage, despite the fact that they have given Drone a decent amount of reclaim. Actually, actually, come to think of it, they've given Drone a lot of reclaim. Enough reclaim to give economic parity. And Drone has the military advantage, primarily due to the crab. Crabs do cost 1,600. Almost 2,000. They cost a lot, so a lot of that is the crab. In fact, the entire disparity is the crab. Or no, not quite. No, the disparity is more than just the crab. That's a 2400k disparity. Akram going for ravens. Looks like Akram's either going for a comp snipe or a crab snipe or both. Probably going to get up about five or six of these and then go for it. I mean, six of them, actually five of them will be enough to kill the crab thanks to the empirical DPS fix. Yeah, when it says 800 on here, like it actually says... Deals 800 damage. Yeah, that... In case... For those of you who haven't played this in a while, but have played it in the past, 0k now has proper damage value. So if it says 800, you can go and think, okay, if I'm hitting something with 800 attack, and that thing is 800 health, I will kill it. That can, of course, be extended to, if I hit something with 4,000 health, using five things that deal 800 damage, it should die. Yeah, how can I... Setting up some glaives to try to deal with the Venoms and Redbacks, which is really the wrong choice. Rockos would be the best choice. Glaives, if microed properly, spread out well, will be able to deal with this. It's going to be extremely risky, but the Venoms, if they're stuck hitting multiple groups of glaives, might have a chance. I mean, it is it is buying some time for Aquanim. Buying time for them to get more Ravens. And they do still have the economic advantage. However, an Infiltrator has been set up just in case. Probably going to go for the Commander fairly soon. Keep... I'm keeping my eye on that one. Keep that selected. 
However, the Ravens have been revealed unsuccessfully trying to go for Redback Snipes when really the target was the Crab. Now, like I said, I'm not sure if... No, the Crab, the crab and Commander's position are both perfectly well known. There was no reason for that to happen. I don't know why Akronim went for these units. They are much harder to kill. I mean, defense, yes, but Napalm Bomber would have been the thing to go for. Or just... Thunderbird was the right choice. The Ravens, much better used getting rid of this Crab, especially as the Crab is in motion. Because, like I said, armor. If it's not in motion, it effectively has 1,200 health. In motion, it only has 4,000 health. And getting hit hard by these Glaives, not going to be killed, though. However, the Raven's coming in and almost able to kill it. It is going to bunker down, but two more Ravens will finish it off, and that's exactly what's coming in. Two more Raven Three more Ravens, in fact, going for the Crab Snipe. Without repair, they will die, and the Crab getting stunned out. The Redbacks here would have been a slightly better target for stun, but the Crab is going to die. Down goes that Crab, and that, with that, Aquanim now retakes the military advantage. They already had territory advantage, but Drone splitting them off. Going, cutting it off right here, taking the north side, making sure there's no easy way for Aquanim to defend that, and cutting down on Aquanim's economic advantage. Because of the fact that Aquanim has been very aggressive, Drone has a lot of reclaim to work from, so they can easily get back to economic parity. In fact, they already are. And then from there, take military parity. However, they do have to defend fairly well, and this is where a Stardust would work nicely, just to point out. In fact, how many defenders are right here? There are two Stardusts worth of defenders, although admittedly defenders are good in their own right, especially when you have air, but the Lotus is... Yeah. I'm going to plug Stardust for a little while because I see a lot of Glaive use that I just think Stardust would have killed that all. I've seen Stardust kill that all. Surprisingly unpopular defensive option, but I think it, it's underrated, personally. Anyway. Drone, as we can see, has gone for the air switch to deal with the Ravens. However, that crab loss was a big one. The calm is still around. And actually, killing the commander would be a massive blow. Mostly for reclaim. Drone has not been reclaiming much until just now. They've started setting up a reclaim path. But the thing is, they hadn't done that before. However, now that they are, it's even more important. Killing the calm is a huge economic boon. Normally, the calm is just 4 metal per second. But it's going to be 14 metal per second for... I don't know how long. How much metal is this? 2,000 metal. Yeah, it's going to be for a good 3 or 4 minutes. Assuming the calm doesn't die. But yeah, short of death, there's going to be 3 or 4 minutes worth of plus 14 from this calm. Roughly. In total. However, the Ravens are unfortunately not able to reload. No air pad was available, and they are going to be taken out by Swifts fairly effectively. No defenses in the main base either. No defenders or anything. Akunum was being very aggressive. Expanded quite a lot, and probably overexpanded, as Drone was able to take out the north side without too much issue. There were no defenses up here, in fact, from the looks of it. Or if there were, it was maybe a Lotus. Nope, not even. And with Venoms getting rid of these... Oh, man, all is going down. All of Aquinas' forces are being just melted by drones. I mean, really, after getting rid of the Air Force, Aquinas invested so much money in the Air Force, and drone has completely destroyed it. And locked it down totally. And thanks to that Infiltrator... I mean, where is the Infiltrator on now? That's on the Infiltrator's point. There's the Infiltrator. The Infiltrator was right here. Did get killed, though. It would appear. No, that's a flea. What am I saying? Where's the Infiltrator? Didn't get killed. It's right here. There we go. Damaged, but not killed. Able to stop the Commander, but not able to kill it. Anyway, yeah, so... Drone basically is getting 24 metal per second out of this reclaim field. And able to completely push back. Akunum had quite the advantage, but Drone's just bursting out of it. Thanks to the reclaim. Just able to pull back. I mean, Aquanim is dealing a bit of damage with these Rockos. Small amount of damage. They are on fight order and going Brownie in motion style. Taking out... Sorry, that was 19, not 24. But taking out plus 5 of that. If they can take out the commander, that's another plus 14 that they're taking out of Drone. Taking out of Drone's economy. But at this point, they're far more concerned about their own defense. And they are getting a fair amount of reclaim, but they lost their commander, which is a huge deal. Their commander... What did it have? Light Particle Beam. Nothing yet. Still, that's a lot. That has a lot of damage. There are three Conjurers. One's actually in production, so only two on the field. One of which is over in the southeast side of the map, reclaiming what it can. There, however, is not a whole lot of stuff in the southeast side of the map. There's a fair amount of energy reclaim, which is good. Akinem does need that, but not a whole lot of anything else. So Akinem right now on the back foot very hard. If they had more Conjurers, it'd be easier for them to reclaim and pull themselves back into the game. And they are trying to build them. They're building more Caretakers. Using that to push more units out, getting some Swifts up. 
Pox wouldn't be a bad idea either, nor would some defenders or maybe some razors even. Just one or two races in the main base just to protect their air force. Building a lot of conjurers though, this is good. They need to use that, they need to get the reclaim, but they need to be very quick about it. They need to be efficient about it and not, as as best as they can, not waste any military units. Because there's still a bit of a chance to come back. Aquinum's not out yet, mostly because of reclaim. They need to take a lot of that reclaim in order to be back in the game. And unfortunately, they don't have a whole lot of that right now. In fact, the eastern side of the map has been completely destroyed and lost to them. So Akinum right now very strongly on the defensive. Getting rid of these Hermits that were attacking. That is actually quite a lot of metal here. Like 160 each. That's going to be 70 metal or so. 64. Yeah, not bad. Got rid of those for basically free. So yeah, just needs to use these Conjures for Reclaim. And that'll be able to essentially bring back... Well, Reclaim and building more power plants. Or just pure Reclaim, frankly. Honestly, pure Reclaim would do the trick. Because what would end up happening is... These Conjurers would take not just metal, but also energy, so they'd, par they'd work out for everything. However, they are just building power structures, not going for the Reclaim. And yeah, I know I'm harping on Reclaim a lot because it actually is a really important thing. I mean, with 0k, it's a very strong defensive mechanic. The fact that if your opponent attacks you and you push them back, you can get kind of back to a more even state with Reclaim. You have to use it, but if you do use it, it makes it easier to even the game back up. And Razor has been placed forward, which is good for Aquinum, but honestly, Drone... They're not worried too much about that. They're trading their air control over for Ravens, but they don't have to worry about that because Aquinum isn't building too many Swifts of their own. Aquinum has, like, one. Yeah, Drone has air control. Drone has an okay amount of ground control, but Aquinum is trying to take that back. And getting rid of the Commander! Nicely done! Did lose quite a lot of Glaives in the explosion, but still... Did a really good job taking care of the commander. Like I said, that was a lot of reclaim income. That was, however, not all the reclaim income. And in fact, most of it has now become weavers. Plus 20 on these weavers right here. Very well defended, too. This is where the hammers would have been handy, actually. This is where hammers would have been much more useful. Unfortunately, they were lost like, minutes ago. Aquinum, however, not, not reclaiming. Continues not to reclaim. Continues to build up further... Defensive structures, building up Hacksaw, building up... I mean, the power plants were a good idea, but definitely need the power plants. Not going to argue with those, because power plants are needed to spend the metal you get from Reclaim. But there is no Reclaim. I'm, I know I'm harping on it, but yeah, Reclaim is big, and that's that's what given Drone this advantage. I mean, Drone was on the back foot, and they reclaimed their way to victory. They reclaimed their way, and they also did nice tactics where they took out the north side of the map, and they took out the south side of the map afterwards. I mean, they've been taking full advantage of the fact that they have the reclaim. They have the reclaim economy. They're just taking everything they can. I mean, they may not have done it right at the beginning of the game where Aquinum did. But Aquinum is not doing it when they have... They have to. They're on the back foot. They need the extra income from reclaim. They don't have the territory to work with. But they have the reclaim. They have... Well, how much reclaim do they have in here, anyway? They have about 2,000 metal worth of reclaim. They have about three or four minutes at... Well, okay, maybe not quite. They had about, well, minute and a half, two minutes at economic parity they could have had, but nope. Throwing in the towel instead, that's, I think, I think it might have been a bit too soon. Drone had a lot of territory, so it would have been hard to beat. And there was a lot of reclaim on all sides, but I think Aquinum could have taken economic parity. It just would have been a matter of proper type counters. Like I said, back foot, not sure if totally defeated, but at any rate, Aquinum, not confident they could do that. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was informative about the power of Reclaim, or lack thereof. I think a decent game for showing that off. And that is also going to be it for me tonight. So, thank you guys for watching. And, oh, actually, pointing out, someone in the chat is pointing out, before I go, Weavers actually have 7.5 build power. I forgot about that, but yeah, they have 7.5. They are on par with vehicle constructors. Which means, that wasn't 20 before... That, I was half right when I said 24 before. It was Commander and Weaver. It's actually 22 and a half. Or it's like 21 and a half. Yeah. 21 and a half. But when it was the four together, that was in 20. That was 30. That was plus 30 metal for a short period of time. Like, going spiders was a huge boon when it came to reclaim or like, when it came to being on the defensive and then pushing back with reclaim powered economy. Like, that's the thing. Like, 0k... 
There is a very strong defensive mechanic of both reclaim and assist build. The combination of the two means that if you're getting hit, but you're able to push back your opponent, your opponent's gotten a bit of territory, but you now have a ton of metal extra and you can push it in. You have a lot of extra available build power as a result. You use some of the build power and reclaim, use the rest of it to use the reclaim to push into units. And then with that, you end up getting your military back up and you kind of reset the game to neutral. You don't, you get rid of whatever advantage your opponent had. Or it's easier to push back a bit. I mean, your opponent still has territory, but then you can attack because your opponent might have naked expanded. We saw that last week, or Saturday, I mean, where it was a game between Aquanim, sorry, Aquanim, between Golda and I think Flipstip, where it just kept going back and forth because both players were doing a good job of not as so much reclaiming, just of, sorry, it was, yeah, it was, I think it was Golda versus Flips, no, not that one. Where was it? Hmm, maybe it was some time ago, actually. Oh, no, it was. No, no, no. It was. It was on the 14th. It was last Wednesday. I did a match analysis of the match between Golda and Flipstep, where it kept going back and forth, partly because of Reclaim, mostly because it was a naked expansion from one player followed by offense of the other player destroying the naked expansion, but then the player who was naked expanding then went on the defensive, stopping the offense, went on the offensive as the other player went naked expansion, just went around in a circle. Not, none of the players went defense, defensive expansion to stop the offense from actually hurting them and then taking the advantage until very near the end. There was a few cycles around that little RPS triangle. Drone, on the other hand, went more defense, reclaim, and offense, but defensively expanded as well. As you can see, their expansions have lotuses around. They have lotuses down here. They have a lot of defenses everywhere. They were just sort of slowly plodding forward. A little bit tough to push through, but at the other hand, Aquanim had a lot they could work from. A lot of reclaim they had. Anyway, so yeah, lots of reclaim. Reclaim is very important. Always worth giving that, keeping that in mind. It's a good way to get back in the game if you have been pushed. There's been a lot of pressure, but you haven't lost. You still you're you're still in a decent position, but you've been taking a lot of pressure, taking a bit of damage. Reclaim is a great way to get back in the game. Very very useful. Always good to have a bunch of star constructors. Court of your economy ship or court of your military is generally considered best to be constructors. Well, yeah, three one ratio or something like that is typically the conventional wisdom. Anyway. That aside, this has been the cast for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was educational or at least entertaining. Thank you all for watching and have a good night, everyone.